About two months ago, last pass, one of the biggest password managers was hacked and over 25 million users were compromised. And unfortunately, I was using LastPass to save some of my passwords. But when I heard the news, I immediately stopped using it and started to look for alternative. And after some searching, I found some good candidates, but then I said to myself, why don't you build your own password manager? We just need a good plan, structure, and a secure cryptographic encryption algorithm to securely encrypt our data. So I took my board and started to write the main features and the structure of this password manager. The main features our password manager needs to have is the ability to display, add, edit, and delete credentials. We also need to have the ability to backup and erase these credentials. And also we need to implement an alphanumeric password generator so that we don't squeeze our minds for passwords each time we need one. And on top of that all, we must have the ability to change the login password, aka the decryption key, which will be used to decrypt all the credentials at runtime. I know it's a lot to take in, so let's look at the structure of this thing to see the bigger picture. Now in order to build this password manager in an efficient way, there are two problems we need to solve. The first one is are we going to store these encrypted credentials? For this problem, we have two options. We can spin a cloud server and have everything stored there. If we go with this option, we won't be able to have access to our credentials if we didn't have internet connectivity. But it'd still be a good option to go with. We can even store a backup for our credentials there just in case. The second option is to store everything on disk and this can be done in two ways. We can create a SQLite file or any other file type that supports SQL queries and have all the credentials stored in it, encrypted of course. Or we can create our own file structure, which is what we're going to do. But before we proceed, we need to solve the second problem, which is how in the world are we going to validate the decryption key? In other words, how do we know that this is the correct password needed to decrypt all the credentials? A good approach here is to measure the entropy of the data after decryption. If it's high, then that means the data is still encrypted and the decryption key is incorrect, and the opposite if it's low. But this is still a sophisticated approach to go with. And instead, we can go with a much simpler one. How about we prepend or put the hash of the decryption key at the very beginning of our file? We can use a cryptographic secure hash function like SHA-256, which will output a hash of 64 bytes. So now our file structure will look like this. The first 64 bytes of the file is the hash of the decryption key and everything after that is our encrypted credentials. So the authentication process goes like this. The user will enter the decryption key for the password manager. A SHA-256 sum will be calculated for this key. Then 64 bytes are read from the beginning of our file, which is the correct hash of the correct decryption key. Then we compare both hashes. If they match, we will proceed to decrypt all credentials and load them in the process memory. You're not probably saying that I can replace the first 64 bytes or the hash of the correct decryption key with another SHA-256 hash of mine. So that when you log in and enter the key that corresponds to your SHA-256 hash, they will match and proceed to credentials decryption. Well, I appreciate your efforts, but this is still useless. For credentials encryption here, we are using AES CBC module of operation. AES is a symmetric encryption algorithm, which means the same key is used for both encryption and decryption. So even if you modify the correct hash and replace it with a hash of yours to proceed to credentials decryption, you'll still get back nothing, because you still need the same key that was used in the encryption process to properly decrypt the credentials. Enough of the theoretical aspects, let's look at some Python code. Here we have around 300 lines of code. I won't go through each line of code for the sake of the video because it will take forever. And instead I will describe what each function does. So in the password manager class, we create a constructor and we open the passwords.db file. If the file is not found in the current worker directory, we call the check database function. This function asks the user to input the full path to the passwords.db file or create a new database file. If no path is supplied, we proceed to create a new database with a default password, password123. And then we insert the SHA-256 hash of this password in the beginning of the file, like we discussed. Then we read the first 64 bytes from the file, which is the decryption key hash, and then ask the user to input the decryption key. This get pass method is similar to input. The only difference is that it doesn't show standard output or what the user types. 
Then we call the paddb key function and supply the decryption key to it. This function pads the key with zeros because the key links in AES CBC mods of operation has to be either 16 bytes for 128 bit encryption or 32 bytes for 256 bit encryption. The whole purpose of the padding is to not restrict the user to only input either 16 or 32 characters password. After that we calculate the SHA-256 sum of the supply key, then we check if they match. If so, we proceed to database decryption and call the decryptDB function. In this function we check if there are any credentials to decrypt. If so, we create an AES instance and supply the key, the mode and the initialization vector, or the IV. The IV is just used to encrypt the first block and it must be only 16 bytes, which is the block size. Then we AES decrypt the credentials and remove all the padding created by the AES algorithm. In case of no credentials decrypt, we set the content to nothing and the records count to zero and call it display options function. This function displays all the options that exist in the password manager. Let's go through them one by one. In case of the first option, we call the show credentials function. Here we check if we have records to display. If so, we parse the credentials and create a table using the tabulate module. This tabulate method takes three parameters, the credentials, the headers or the columns like we discussed before. After we prepend the hash of the decryption key, we insert the credentials and separate each record by a pipeline and each column will be separated by a dash. Hence, we split the content by a pipeline and for each record record we split the columns by a dash so we can have a 2D array like this. After we're done parsing we display the credentials in a grid format. Next we have the add credentials function. This function prompts the user to input the username or the email and the password twice for confirmation. If they match we proceed. If not, the user has to re-enter the credentials again. Then the user inputs the platform for which these credentials. Then we check if we have records. If so, we retrieve the last record ID added and increase it by one for the new record. Then append the new credentials and increase the record count by one. And finally, we call the save db function. This function gets a handle to the database file and then checks if there are any credentials to encrypt. If so, we encrypt them with AES, then the seek function here sets the file pointer to point to the first byte in the database file. It's similar to the fseek function in the C language. Then we first write the hash of the decryption key, then the encrypted credentials, and we close the handle. Next, in the edit credentials function, we display the credentials, then prompt the user to enter the record ID which they want to edit and call the find record function. This function takes the record ID that needs to be modified and loops through all the records to retrieve the index that corresponds to this record ID. And after that user chooses what to edit and based on the option one or two, the email or the password is modified. Then we save the changes and call the save db function to write the modified credentials to disk. Next, the delete credentials function is similar to the edit credentials. The only difference is that we delete the whole record and decrease the record's count by one. Next, we have the change db password. This function is responsible for updating the decryption key. It prompts the user to enter the current decryption key and then it calculates the SHA-256 sum for it and then checks if it matches the current one. If so, the user is prompted to enter the new decryption key twice for confirmation and also make sure the key length is not less than 10 characters. If all the checks are passed, we call the paddb key like we discussed before to add necessary padding to the key and save the changes. Next we have the generate password function. This function generates a 32 character string that consists of upper and lower case letters, digits and punctuation characters. Next in the backup database function, we create a backup or a copy of the current database file. So the user is prompted to enter the decryption key. If it's correct, we copy the current database file to the current worker directory and add the dot .back extension to it as a backup file. And finally, the last function is the erase database function. In this function, the user is prompted to enter the decryption key. If it's correct, all the credentials are deleted and the records count is set to zero. And the save db function is called to save the changes. That is pretty much the password manager. You can even now implement your own. You don't need to build a custom structure. You can just use a SQLite database to store all the credentials. It's going to make life easier for you. I implemented a custom structure of my own as a proof of concept to demonstrate the idea. Now let's talk about the security and the potential attacks against this application. There are two potential attack vectors here. 
The first one is to try and crack the decryption key or the SHA-256 hash. Worst case scenario, the key will be 10 characters long and consists of only lowercase alphabet and digits. So that means we have 36 to the power of 10 or 3 quadrillion 656 trillion 158 billion 440 million 62,0976 combinations to brute force. And let's say somehow we have access to a machine that can compute 100 billion SHA-256 hashes per minute. And I'm really being generous here. It will still take you around 25 days to brute force all the combinations and by increasing the length of the decryption key and adding more complexity to it, it will be impossible to crack. The second attack vector is to try and decrypt the AES encrypted credentials. Well, if we have access to the entire Bitcoin mining network and turn this huge computing power against an AES 128 bit key, it will take more than 100 times the age of the universe to crack it. So unless you have a quantum computer, it's impossible. To summarize, this application is cryptographically secure. The worst thing that can happen is your machine gets compromised and the threat actor deletes the encrypted database file. That's why we added the backup feature. You can find the code down in the description on GitHub. Also before you run it, make sure to first run pip3 install-r requirements.txt to install all the necessary modules. I also thought it would be cool to give this password manager a name, so have fun playing with passkeep. Also a huge shout out to all the awesome people who support me on Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this one, consider supporting us on Patreon. Next video is made especially for you. Stay tuned.